Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion, continuing for the 26th day of February. Happy Monday to you, 2018. That is February 26, 2018. Let's get on with it. Let's take a look at the Southern Oscillation Index, the um, long paddock site from the Queensland government here in Australia. I'm uh, going to roll out a new version of their site. I checked out the preview, and I really liked it. This is what the SOI page looks like. And you can see that the contributor for today, positive 21.95. So the average now for the last 90 days is pretty much at neutral, just slightly negative at 0 0.06 negative. And then the 30-day average is running about minus 6 or so. But I think that's going to go up over the next several days. And overall, February will end fairly close to neutral. And that's what we're looking at across the tropical Pacific in terms of overall pressure pattern, the equatorial Pacific waters moderating from that you know, fairly decent La Nina that we had to a more neutral pattern. And we can see that reflected here in the subsurface map. And this is updated fairly recently here on the 22nd of February. Very large area of subsurface warmth developing in the western Pacific but we still have this fairly large area holding on of subsurface and all the way up to the surface. Cool water, the La Nina holding on there a little bit, the La Nina, uh, I guess, shadow, if you will. And so it's just going to be a balancing act in terms of which one uh, wins out. And I think when you look at this, you could easily deduce that, you know, there's a little bit more warm water overall than cold water uh, in the subsurface. But a lot of this water is way down here, um, and that just sounds funny, doesn't it? A lot of those positive anomalies are way down here at depth. You know, I almost said it, that a lot of the water is beneath the water, but I didn't. So anyway, these strong positive anomalies are fairly deep in the western Pacific. They're not up here at the surface, and this is part of what we call this downwelling Kelvin wave, and it starts to get into ocean physics and other things that may become quite boring, but the bottom line for us that watch this kind of thing uh, on a weekly to monthly basis, we need to watch this warm pool and let's see what happens. Does it stay down weld and then kind of get over here and fizzle out, or is it able to erode all this away? It's pretty much what I talk about every week here. Let's watch and see how this progresses. So far, as we end February, there are not a lot of signs of an El Nino coming on, nor are there a lot of signs at all for a La Nina, and therefore I think it's going to be a neutral pattern uh, overall sea surface temperature anomaly-wise for the upcoming hurricane season. I think that makes the most sense, and you can see that here in the tropical Pacific. The deep blues are starting to erode away, and we're warming things up again from where we were. Contrary to what we've seen lately in the Atlantic, the deep tropics down here really cooling off uh, compared to what we've seen in recent months. And then the North Atlantic up here, the northern parts of the North Atlantic Basin, the northern latitudes are definitely a lot warmer. And this really shows you here the Gulf of Mexico had a lot of cold anomalies in it after the January and into early February cold snap that we had. Now all of the Gulf of Mexico for the most part running above normal uh, and it just shows you how quickly that can change. So I think that this is going to change as well uh, over the next couple of weeks because we're entering into this negative North Atlantic oscillation phase. And you can see we've been pretty, well, let's see, all the way from about mid-December, early to mid-December until just now, it's been positive. And in terms of what that does to sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic, generally you're going to cool things off because a positive NAO uh, generally features stronger higher high pressure out over the Atlantic Basin, and you get this stronger trade surge, etc., and you tend to cool things off. But look what's happening here. We're going to drop the net NAO index, and it's going to go quite negative. Uh, in fact, it'll be more negative then it was positive any time. Does that make sense? So that should slow down those trade winds out here over the Atlantic. And I bet you that as we watch this going through March, that this region starts to warm up again. 
And there you go. Well, we'll see. That's the beauty of this, is we can see if I'm right. <laughs> and I will show you. And if I'm wrong, I'll try to figure out why I was wrong. But it makes logical sense that in a negative NAO, the Atlantic Basin tends to warm up. In the uh, deep tropics and in a positive NAO, the opposite happens. Now notice up here in the northwest Atlantic, also it was much colder in the southwest Atlantic. So I should have done a comparison map. My fault. I'll do that next week where I'll show you a few weeks ago and then what we're seeing now. But the bottom line is the western Atlantic, the northwest Atlantic, really warmed up here. And that could come into play as we get into the next several weeks here with the change in this pattern because a negative NAO generally also means a stormy pattern for the east coast of the U.S. Not always, but sometimes, often. So there's that ne negative NAO probably going to hold on through a good chunk of March. All right, actual sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico. Again, we never, ever lost that 26 degrees Celsius isotherm. It never, like, hid down here in the Caribbean. And so the Gulf has stayed warm uh, pretty much all winter long, with a few exceptions along the shelf water areas, of course. But things are warming up, and will continue to do so now that we are getting, getting closer to spring. I mean, look over here, even on the western side, of the Yucatan Peninsula in the southeast part of the Bay of Campeche, also 26 degrees Celsius. And that's the magic number, 26C. It's almost 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's what we look for. Uh, so spring break coming up in the next few weeks for different colleges, and then eventually our um, secondary education school systems will have, have their spring breaks March into April. And if this will hold, the Gulf will actually be pretty nice, especially in Mississippi. And again, not so much down here in South Padre. Some of those water temperatures, 15, 16 Celsius. Uh, great place to visit, but you might want to stay out of the water. Maybe it'll warm up a little bit. We still have a few weeks to go. That's where the National Tropical Weather Conference is being held in April. And that's a lovely, lovely place. It's remote. I won't say it's hard to get to, but it's not like driving down to Galveston from Houston. That could be hard to get to sometimes just because of traffic. You can get to Galveston faster than, or to South Padre faster than you can get to Houston, uh, Galveston. See, I screwed it all up uh, on a bad traffic day. Sometimes it's easier to get to South Padre. Let's just move on and try to cut the comedy for today. The uh, Atlantic, the West Atlantic here, like I was saying, uh, you know, all this over here running above normal, but the actual sea surface temperatures, yeah, it's pretty warm, 24, 25 degrees Celsius here in the Gulf Stream, and that will help to fuel some of these storms that we may see over the coming days and weeks. Um, and it could be interesting as we go into that and look at the lower 48 weather. Yeah, I in the off-season, I look for these signals that we look in at the tropics, the big puzzle pieces, and then I like to see what we've got in terms of any big-ticket weather events, especially for the East Coast. I'm down here in Wilmington, North Carolina, so it's you know pretty easy for me to get up here to the Northeast or even New England. Uh, the Outer Banks sometimes get these big storms. Uh, it just depends on the system, how much coastal impact there is, the overall scale of the event. And the one coming up here for later in the week definitely has my attention. If we go through the frames here, uh, this is 48 hours out uh, off of the TropicalTidbits.com site. Levi Cowan, this is the G, uh, GFS, that he has created this nice way to just animate the different features. Uh, by either animating them or stepping through the frames. But I want to show you here, starting um, Thursday morning, Thursday night, Wednesday night into Thursday, this storm system starts to take shape here up in the Ohio Valley, and it's going to try to jump offshore and create this really, really strong storm system that normally you see these things just kind of swing out and go on out to sea. Or maybe they form in the Gulf and they move up the East Coast or do whatever they're going to do. But watch this. This is really neat. And this is part of the negative NAO, what we call the blocking pattern. As this thing, this thing uh, starts to unfold, low pressure develops offshore. And the models have been back and forth with the low pressure being over here. Now it's a little bit farther out. You have a very long area, large area of low pressure overall. But here's the takeaway. A couple of things. This is valid Friday morning. And watch what happens if we go through... Uh, these different time periods here. This is Friday afternoon. 
and then it just kind of sits there. You see that? And then it finally starts to move away. We're talking, I don't know, let's see, what is this, um, Thursday night into Friday? Long duration. And if you know your weather maps, those isobars packed in there like that, are you kidding me? There is going to be some coastal flooding because guess what else? Full moon coming up. The astronomical high tides of the month. This is not a good situation. So a lot of people track this, your winter storms, your nor'easters, because of the snow element. And I totally get it. I'm a kid at heart. Yes, it's pretty awesome to stand out there when there's 30 inches of snow, or a foot of snow even, and it's blowing 60 miles per hour. That, that, there's something about that that's pretty amazing. In this situation, the snow shield looks like it's going to be on the backside, just not enough Arctic air. But the coastal impact is what I'm really the most worried about. You think about these vulnerable areas on Long Island Sound, along the New Jersey coast, Belmar down to Brigantine, and up in the New York Bight, right up there in that corner, right up there. You guys are familiar with that, the Sandy Hook area, all the way back into the uh, Raritan River. I think that's how you say it. And then, like I said, Long Island Sound, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, and then eastern Massachusetts, areas like Situate and Plymouth and down to the Cape, uh, the islands off of there. So I'm contemplating very seriously heading up to this area starting Wednesday morning to deploy uh, some of the camera systems that we use for hurricanes. Continue to test, just, you know, gives me a reason to be out there. And um, we'll see what happens. And then maybe even if I can find a good spot to set up the weather station, these isobars packed in here like that tells me. In fact, you know what? Let me just single out this image. Then we can zoom in on it. Really, really tight here. Um, these isobars packed in here like this really tells me that there's going to be some strong winds in here. You know, 50, 60 miles per hour wouldn't surprise me at all. And it's starting to get the attention, of course, of the local weather offices, the WFOs. This is from Boston, and this was um, put out, I think, late last night. Um, basically, you know, just describing the low confidence right now because it's several days away, but they're picking up on it, and they're talking about some of the impacts that I was mentioning here, that this will be happening during a high astronomical tide. So you have wave, swell, high surf, will each e uh, equal coastal flooding, beach erosion, rain and snow, and additional issue. And, and man, I can't talk. You can tell my excitement's brewing. An additional issue uh, as well. Now, again, I don't see this as being a huge snowmaker, but it could be for some place. So stay tuned for that. And then out of National Weather Service, Mount Holly, I I, I got to give these folks credit here. That's a lot of like contracting your words there. I thought that Twitter expanded to um, double the characters for pretty much everybody, and I hadn't counted all of them up. Maybe that is all the characters, but you got to give it to those folks that do the social media at Mount Holly. You know, bravo. Um, I was trying to, like, you know, New Jersey, Delaware, eastern Pennsylvania, eastern Maryland, dry and mild today through Wednesday. Storm late Thursday, Friday, still uncertainty. Coastal flooding likely, likely, Thursday evening through Sunday morning, and then high tides, etc. Um, they did a good job piecing those little chunks of big words together into three little words. Nice. Graphics, G-R-P-H-C-S. Honestly, that's a very good job. But the main thing, uh, all comedy aside of what they're showing here with these contractions, probably going to do a briefing package around 4 p.m. Eastern time today. So check that out if you follow National Weather Service Mount Holly. They'll probably put that out around 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, but again, down to Jersey as well, this could be a problem. And um, you need to stay on top of this if you are in that area. All right, so I'll probably have another discussion on this tomorrow where it'll just specifically focus on this winter storm. Um, and even though it don't, might not have a big snow component, I'm telling you, you know, and you've seen these winter storms before, these wet nor'easters you know, that are not snowy and cold necessarily, they can pack quite a punch. And this one has the, the makings of that. Uh, as this pattern changes to that negative NAO, we really have to watch this. And I might be in there uh, in person, so to speak, and uh, streaming video from some really unique locations since these camera systems can be put anywhere that I want them to be put. 
pretty awesome. So tomorrow afternoon I'll have another update, and we'll see what happens then. All right? Have a great rest of your Monday afternoon, and I uh, appreciate you tuning in. Again, I am Mark Sutherth for HurricaneTrack.com. We will talk again tomorrow afternoon.